real taste of winter today as we look ahead at your forecast to another chance for snow tonight. Plus, several local school districts deciding to cancel class today. A closer look at what goes into making that decision. And later, Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes speaking publicly for the first time today about the three officers recently arrested in separate incidents. News 3 Now at 6 starts right now. And thanks for joining us. Last night's snow making for some pretty scenic views today all across south central Wisconsin. Well, thanks for joining us. And unlike last time, we got some accumulating snow. This time it appears this is going to stick around a bit longer. Oh, it really is. But with the nice views comes its own set of new challenges, especially with the heavy wet snow we saw overnight. The city of Madison has declared a snow emergency. That means alternate side parking rules are in effect. The city says more than three inches fell overnight. All streets will be plowed. And in an update, the this morning, the city urged people to find off street parking options for the next two days as crews work to remove that snow. So let's see if any more snow is on the way. Julian, see right now with your certified most accurate forecast. Julian? Well, we are watching for when that snow will start to continue for us here in southern Wisconsin. But here outside of our patio, we're just looking at a couple of flurries, not the light snow showers that we had just a little bit ago. But on our radar, you can see a lot of that snow is mainly to the western side of southern Wisconsin. Start to slowly but surely move across the rest of the area as we get into the rest of tonight. Now, a closer view. If you're around Janesville, we are still looking at some light snowfall, but it's really Prairie du Chien where we're going to see that band start to collect itself and spread throughout the rest of the area once we get into later parts of tonight. Now, right now, we are looking at cloudy conditions. We may see a couple of flurries, but the snow showers and the stuff that we were dealing with earlier this evening has pretty much ended for right now, but we will see it pick back up later into tonight. Around 10 o'clock is when we're looking for our best shot to see some more light snowfall that will carry into the overnight hours, but then end rather early, especially well before daybreak tomorrow. Temperatures, however, are going to be the big stories. We're going to be looking at those to be below freezing, so they could be seeing some ice development for some areas as we get into the overnight. We'll talk about that and potentially even more snow on the way in just a few moments. Until then, back to you guys. Thank you, Julian. And here is something to keep in mind this year. The city of Madison is rolling out new limits on how much salt residents can use to clear ice and snow from their sidewalks, including possible fines for using too much. The change is designed to keep sidewalks safe while also reducing the amount of salt that finds its way into the community's waterways. We have a breakdown on the regulations on channel3000.com. The storm brought heavy snow and with it knocked down branches and power lines. Alliant Energy and MGE crew spent the day throughout our area trying to get the power back on for those who lost it. Well, and our Catherine Merck met crews near Portage to talk about their strategies to get things fixed. Here in Caldonia, Alliant Energy says they still have 8,000 customers without power today. That's down from 17,500 customers who didn't have power this morning. Some of the harder hit areas were, were here in the, the Caledonia, Portage, Baraboo, Dells, out at Spring Green. Um, so we're working to get all those folks back online. It wasn't just the small towns that got stuck without any power. MG&E's outage map reported more than a thousand customers without power Thursday morning, including larger outages near the Arboretum, the far west side of Madison, Shorewood Hills, and Middleton. Luckily, as the day has gone on, more people have been able to get it back up and running. The power has been restored to the majority of customers, and we anticipate the rest of the customers to be restored later this afternoon. Some of these customers without power are in really rural areas. So Alliant Energy is asking that if you don't have power, you're going to have to be patient with them as they try to get the power back on as soon as possible. Reporting in Caldonia, I'm Catherine Merck for News 3 Now. Several kids in the Madison area taking advantage of the fresh snow, something kids always look forward to in the winter. Of course, a snow day, and there were more than 90 school cancellations and delays today, including the Madison School District. And that is very different from what we saw last week. Friday's storm did not close schools. So what goes into those decisions? Will Keneally reports. Well, it depends storm to storm, but the decision largely comes down to safety. This is not only for parents and buses that have to drive in it, but also making sure that the walking paths will be clear in time for school. The safety of our commute to school with road conditions, it, it's really about that. While the city of Madison may set a specific snowfall target for when they decide to plow all the streets, it's a different calculation for MMSD. We often get the question, well, what amount of snow 
but there's really no minimum amount. I mean, we could have icy conditions that, that could close schools. But it's really more about the safety of our students, our staff, and our families. It's a decision made on a storm-by-storm -storm basis. For instance, last week's storm did not close schools, but today's did. It's a weather team that uh, consists of several different disciplines across the school district who begin to work maybe even a few days in advance of an expected weather event. And the district also receives input from other Madison stakeholders. Uh, the City of Madison Police Department are always a good partner in providing us additional information on what's happening in our worlds. Um, and then we also consult with um, all of our surrounding school districts. That includes sharing information between the districts. And for Madison, closing schools does not just impact the school day, but MSCR programs as well. And that's about making sure that kids can remain safe while walking around the buildings. What we consider is the uh, condition of walking routes to school buildings. Many of our students uh, walk to school, and so we want to make sure that they, they, are, they get to the buildings uh, safely. And Lamont says that the decision largely comes down to each individual school district. There's no statewide guidance, and that allows districts themselves to best determine the specific needs to keep the commute safe. Will, thank you. And there will undoubtedly be more school cancellations and delays this winter to get those notifications on the go and stay up to date with all things local weather. Check out our free First Warn weather app. Next at 6, the planned strike for Red Cross employees in Wisconsin has been called off after a new agreement is reached. This comes after 16 months of negotiations. The new agreement includes retroactive bonus payments for 2021, retroactive 6% pay raises for 2022, and another 3% raise for 2023, as well as enhanced benefits. The strike had been planned for December 23rd, coinciding with the Red Cross's annual holiday blood drive. In Adams County tonight, a sheriff's deputy is on leave after an officer-involved shooting that happened last night. The State Department of Investigation now handling that investigation. Officers were called to a domestic disturbance in the town of New Chester just before 9 p.m. Investigators say the suspect allegedly had a knife and the deputy fired, hitting the man. He survived and was rushed to the hospital. Is expected expected to survive. The deputy is now on administrative leave, which is standard policy. For the first time, we're hearing directly from Madison's police chief about the arrests of three of his officers on criminal charges last month. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles broke this news and brings us the latest. Naomi. Chief Tom Barnes has only briefly commented on the situation before, and that was through spokespeople in written statements. Today, he sat down with me to share a little bit more about the process. And so to catch you up, three officers were arrested in three different incidents last month. Over the span of about two weeks, none of them while on the job. Two of the arrests involve fights with women. One is charged with felony battery and domestic abuse, the other with disorderly conduct. They're all on administrative leave today. Chief Sean Barnes says they're waiting for their criminal investigations to finish before doing their own internal investigations. Certainly, you know, we want our officers to um, to abide by the rules and regulations. Uh, we do understand that we, we recruit police officers from the human race. And from time to time, we have people who make mistakes. Um, we're not um, special in that uh, we don't have a special set of rules for us. But there is a process uh, that everyone is afforded. He told me that their internal affairs department is staying in touch with the investigators at the agencies that arrested the officers. They're also able, if it applies, to start an internal investigation before the criminal one ends, and that's if the issue at hand is policy violations. More on the officer arrest, that's online right now at channel3000.com. Around the state, a 10-year-old boy from Wauwatosa is charged as an adult for fatally shooting his mom. The boy made his first in-person appearance in court this week. Throughout most of the hearing yesterday, the boy sat quietly with his head down. Prosecutors have charged him with first-degree intentional homicide. Records indicate he shot his mother in the face after refusing to buy him a virtual reality headset. The boy's attorneys asked bail be reduced to $100, the only money they say the boy has. My team and I have spoken with him about his ability to post anything. He told us about piggy banks with savings that he had from, um, from gifts, from birthday gifts, um, and scavenging through cushions in the couch that he's been able to save up. The judge did not reduce bail, keeping it at $50,000. If the boy is unable to post bail, he may remain in custody now and for the rest of his life if convicted of intentional homicide. Still ahead tonight, a closer look at some of the damage all around the country from the same storm system that hit Wisconsin overnight. But first, a groundbreaking event today for Madison's bus rapid transit system. Stay with us.
whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. My favorite thing about the Power Swabs is that I was actually able to take the swab and really get through some of those areas that are kind of like untreated. I felt like I, I can immediately see the results and I'm like, oh, I'm definitely starting to see the shades getting brighter and brighter or whiter and whiter. If you have yellowing between your teeth, if you have coffee or tea stains near your gum line, just snap, swab, and smile. And in each five minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old fashioned way with strips and trays and start using the Power Swabs five minute solution. After just seven days, the results were awesome. Power Swabs was easy to use every day and each day I could see it better and better and from beginning to end, it's definitely whiter. Uh, and they look clean, they feel clean and people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your five-minute solution to whiter teeth. This holiday season, order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off. And as an added bonus, get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen screen or visit powerswabs.com today. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Madison's B-Cycle closing up shop today for the winter season. That means electric bikes will not be available for riding until it reopens in mid-March. B-Cycle says more stations are coming next year, so stay tuned for those updates and new locations. The much-anticipated bus rapid transit system breaking ground in Madison today. Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway hosting a ceremony alongside federal, state, and other local officials. The initial corridor will run east-west through Madison's downtown and the UW campus areas. The city says it is working to implement BRT to improve its existing transit system and reduce travel times across the region. Construction will begin next year with a targeted start date of fall 2024. You know, a strong public transit system is one of the most important assets a community can have. I often, I often like to talk about connecting the dots, which is just my way of saying we have to see how every issue affects all others. And transit is one of those whose dots connect with a whole bunch of other dots. City says bus rapid transit will speed up workforce transportation, reduce congestion, and build the transportation backbone of a vibrant regional economy. More to come tonight at 6 when we come back. A string of tornadoes and severe storms ripping through parts of the south. Plus, after last night's storm, we're keeping an eye on another band of snow on its way tonight. Your full forecast is next. Stock up for the holidays this Friday through Sunday at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee canned green beans, just 39 cents. And Hy-Vee corn, just 39 cents. Get up to 12 cans of Hy-Vee corn or green beans for your holiday recipes. Only 39 cents each, only at Hy-Vee. After a lifetime in the jewelry business, Pete Dinney is retiring. And Dinney's Jewelers Retirement Cell is in progress. Save up to 60% off store-wide. All must go. All bridal jewelry. All colored stone rings. All silver jewelry. All pearls. All diamond bracelets and pendants. Absolutely every finished piece is up to 60% off. Pete Dinney and family are saying thank you, Middleton, for 40 years of support. Join us for our retirement celebration. Pete Dinney is retiring. And Dinney's Jewelry Retirement Cell is in progress. Save up to 60% off. All must go. 1903 Cayuga Street, Middleton. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us, now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. 
There's nothing like hitting the waves. There's nothing like volunteering, but my moderate to severe eczema can make it hard. Now I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixit helps heal your skin from within, so you can have clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about to fix it. Ready, Dad? All charged up. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright with a special offer. Now choose from a great selection of new Ford vehicles in stock and ready for delivery. Or place a custom order on select Ford vehicles. So much. Lock in your rate and you're protected. I'm proud of you, kid. And that's how Ford is helping you shine bright. This season, get into a 2022 Explorer SUV with 2.9% financing for 60 months at your local Ford dealer and shine bright. Get Hy-Vee's best deals of the year this Friday through Sunday. Get bacon for just $1.99. That's Hormel Black Label Bacon, just $1.99. And 10 Hy-Vee brats for just $10. Only a dollar each and only at Hy-Vee. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. It wasn't only Wisconsin getting hit with snow. Check out this video from Duluth. That area has been hit with more than two feet of lake effect snow over the past few days. Only light accumulations are expected in most areas going forward, but snow may linger into the weekend there as the massive storm system continues to move slowly up north and east. Again, the same storm system also hitting people hard in parts of the south. A state of emergency in tornado ravaged Louisiana, where at least three people People are dead, including a mother and her eight-year-old son. You know, their bodies were ripped from their home, found in the streets more than a half a mile apart. Nearly 50 tornadoes have been reported across the south so far, 16 of them in Louisiana. And Nick Valencia reports from Gretna, Louisiana. Yep, that's a tornado heading our way. Extreme weather wreaking havoc in Louisiana. After more than a dozen tornadoes were reported across the region Wednesday, Kalana residents in St. Charles Parish witnessed a tornado tear through their neighborhood in a matter of seconds. It shook us and knocked us down, but then when I walked over, I seen all the damage on, on the street. And I just can't believe this happened like eight seconds. Eight seconds it took to do this. One woman described the moment the tornado hit her family's home. I just hear a whole bunch of booming against the wall, and then as I'm running out, my brother, he runs in front of me, and then as we're running, we just hear a whole bunch of boom, and then... Everything, like we hit a roof lifting and he's lifted off his feet and he grabbed onto the, to the door frame. Jefferson Parish was hard hit and left in the dark. In this path that we saw, there are a lot of power lines down and that's not going to happen quickly, the restoration there. People want to help themselves. People are already um, in the dark trying to clean their houses, pull, pull stuff to the driveway. Um, it's it's a very sad that we're dealing with this in December um, when we thought we got through the hurricane season okay. A tornado touched down in the city of Gretna. I toured the homes destroyed in the immediate aftermath. The noise that it made, it was unreal. I was looking out the window at first, and I, I just got out the window. You know, I mean, I, I was panicking that, you know, and I just started saying my prayers. I spoke to some of the neighborhood's youngest about the experience. I thought it was an explosion, and then my mama told me to get down. Another two tornadoes touched down in New Iberia, causing damage to a medical center and destroying many homes. We had mobile homes flipped, um, houses just completely destroyed, families all torn apart. It's going to take a while before people are going to be, or things are going to be back to normal. New Iberia resident Lizzie Taylor says she will now have to move. That tornado. That was Nick Valencia reporting that storm now moving out into the Atlantic and also up the northeastern coast. We have our own weather to contend with. Here's Julian Seawright with our first warn forecast. And just a look at that system that has brought in so much severe weather for our friends to the south and us winter weather. So we're still looking at bands of snowfall throughout much of the upper Midwest. It's going to continue throughout the next couple of days because this system is very slow moving, but it is also a powerful one. So it's going to be impacting 
affecting the mid-Atlantic and even New England areas in the coming days. But for us, our impacts are going to be minimal from here on out. We're going to be looking at a couple of bands of snow to start to develop and temperatures that will be falling, which will create some slippery and also some icy conditions overnight because we're going to be seeing temperatures fall into the middle 20s throughout much of southern Wisconsin. 26 degrees in Madison, 28 in Janesville, and 26 for Platteville. So we are looking for the temperatures to be below freezing to start to create some ice overnight, which could make a little bit of treacherous conditions for our roads going into our Friday morning. So just make, make sure that you're prepared for some slippery and slick conditions. But here's our radars of right now. Mainly that band of snow is still rather light, but it's still to the southwestern side of southern Wisconsin. And we're going to see it start to slowly but surely move its way towards Dane County. But we won't really start to see the real full force of this impacts until we get into around 10 o'clock tonight. And still just going to be light snow. It's not going to be accumulating nearly as much as it did overnight, but we're still going to be looking at it to bring in a little something. So around 10 o'clock, it's going to start to make its way into Dane County before it starts to move a bit more north and fall apart. Overnight, it's going to be quiet, but it will be cold. So anything that is melted today and all the wet roads will start to freeze over just a bit as we head into our daybreak. Temperatures are still going to be into the middle 20s, upper 20s, and won't really see much relief at all throughout the course of our Friday. Temperatures will be steady into the middle and upper 20s throughout the course of the day. And then we have another round of some snow. They'll start around noon for our areas to the west and start to make its way towards Dane County around 3 o'clock and even for 5 o'clock, which could make some impacts for our travel once again before it starts to clear its way out overnight going into our early Saturday morning. So make sure that you're prepared for things to just not be as smooth as butter as we go into our traveling over uh, throughout our Friday. But outside of it, the good news is we're not looking at a lot in terms of snowfall totals. It's going to be about an inch, maybe two for some areas for us in Dane County, one to two for Mineral Point and Boscobel, and even for the Dells. Really, for Oakwood is the one that has the best opportunity to start to see any significant snowfall totals from this next couple of rounds of snowfall over the next few days. But outside of that, here's our three things we'll need to know. We're going to be looking at snowfall from tonight's going into Friday night. Cold temperatures are going to really roll in for us going into our weekend. And then we are watching for a snow system next week that could also hinder our travel for holiday plans. Here's a look at how things are going to be panning out over the next couple of days. Temperatures will fall into the 20s and then go into the teens as we go into next week. Then for Christmas, what well, the good news is, with any kind of snow that falls between Wednesday into Friday, it's likely to bring us a white Christmas by the time we get into Saturday, guys. Julian, thank you. Just heading sports. Chris Jenny likes to keep it positive in Edgerton. How changing one word really switched his team's mindset. Our coach of the week is next. Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. What you see is important. How you see is important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Right now, get 40% off lenses with the purchase of any frames. Shopco Optical. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. If you or a loved one were stationed at Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987 and were later diagnosed with cancer, Parkinson's disease, or other serious health effects, call right now. Call 1-800-336-0524. Complete your next project with help from Menards. Give your bathroom a fresh update with Delta. Their bathtubs and showers are built for style, design, and durability. Save big money on Delta tubs and showers. Install your new tub surround with Loctite adhesives and caulk. They're easy to use while providing a strong and flexible seal that will last for years to come. Save big money on all Loctite, caulk, and adhesives. Plus, a Menards gift card is always a great gift idea. Hey, there's my girl. Mm. Who's that? Life can be uncomfortable. Your home doesn't have to be. Whether you're looking for all the advanced features or something with a lower upfront cost, with Ream Heating Equipment, you can stay comfortable even in the most uncomfortable situations. Oh, come on. Yes, let's go. Feel the Woolers difference. Call Woolers Heating and Air Conditioning today. Serving Dane County for over 45 years.
This weekend, it's Hy-Vee's Big Pop Sale, Friday through Sunday, featuring six packs of your favorite Pepsi products, just $1.99. You heard that right. Six packs for only $1.99. Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Cherry Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Mug Root Beer, Sierra Mist, Orange Crush, and more. This weekend, all just $1.99 a six pack. Get your holiday guests their favorite drinks. Six packs of Pepsi products, only $1.99, and only at Hy-Vee. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important, too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopco Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify coverage. Tomorrow, watch us put our cookie decorating skills to the test and get expert holiday hacks. Plus, our question of the day has your chance to score Harlem Globetrotters tickets. Will another round of snow impact your morning commute? Tune in tomorrow from 4.30 to 7. Jenny wants three things from his Edgerton girls basketball team. Work hard, be a family, and keep it positive. And as Zach Hanley explains in this week's Coach of the Week, when it comes to critiquing his Crimson Tide, it's call up, not call out to Jenny. Ready, go. There's something building in Edgerton. Go by. Katie, go buy her. You can definitely see the uh, the shift in, in where the program is going. And Chris Jenny is doing it with his team. I think that's a big part of it. Family, families help each other be better and get better. As a family. We use that word every day at practice. All right, here we go, go. And what it really means is our kids want to sacrifice and play for each other. Which is why when Jenny critiques the Crimson Tide's game. Go, Jilly, way to get wide. He calls it, instead of calling out, calling up. He's bringing something to our attention that we need to do better. It's done with a positive spin. What we want to do is make them understand that, hey, we are coaching up because we care. We think you're a valuable piece of the program. It was like a new way of thinking about it because, you know, whenever you're, whenever you hear it, it's always like you're calling somebody out. And I think as soon as those words came out of coach's mouth about calling up, I think it really changed about, like, how I looked at a lot of things. And by just switching up one word. If we think we're getting called out, then we feel badly, but they're not putting me down when I do something wrong. They're trying to show me how I can do it better, so it improves me, it improves the team. Jenny's call-up conversation keep going, keep going. raises more than his team's play. Once you get by her hip, keep going. He's going to call us up about, you know, not only like, oh, Shannon, you did this wrong. Like, he's going to say, oh, you did this right. And a lot of times it's more rights than it is wrongs, and it's just, it really helps build your confidence. Good, kill it, baseline. And don't forget to nominate your coach to be our next Coach of the Week. Just head to the sports page on our website, channel3000.com. Fill out the nomination form, or you can send Zach an email describing how your coach goes above and beyond for his athletes. Zach down at the Kohl Center right now. The Badgers underway against Lehigh and we'll have highlights at 10. And Julian is here with a look at our forecast. Well, things are going to get really cold in the next few days for us. At least it's going to be a gradual drop as we get into Friday and Saturday into the upper 20s. But we are looking for a couple of uh, opportunities to see some light snowfall from tonight's going into our Friday and then clearing out before we get into Saturday. Then heading into next week, folks, temperatures will be dropping into the teens and overnight into the single digits. We're going to be looking at an opportunity once more to see some snow starting in from Wednesday through Thursday, potentially even off Friday. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 10.